What's going on, friends, fans, Marvel fanatics, and many others? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all things major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. Today, of course, a fun video as many of you are on your way to see Thor Love and Thunder either tonight, tomorrow, through the weekend. The movie has arrived, and it is always an absolute blast when we get new Marvel movies, especially Thor Marvel movies, an OG Avenger, he's been here since the very beginning, Thor and Chris Hemsworth, basically the same person, and they're back on the big screen for a fourth film. So the purpose of today's video, we're going to be talking about what I thought. Of course, I did get to see it a couple weeks ago at the red carpet event, the review embargo has lifted, and I'm excited to share with you guys my thoughts. This will, however, be spoiler free. I'm just giving you my reaction, my impressions, what I did like, what I didn't like in a very broad stroked subject. So don't worry about spoilers. However, be careful if you are going down to the comic section. I can't control what other people type. So there are probably some spoilers down there. With that being said, if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other major movie and television news updates happening here on the channel. You can also see me on my other socials, Instagram at Chris M. Ross or Twitter at The Culture Chris. Links to both of these are in the description down below. So, Thor Love and Thunder, is it a hit? Is it a miss? There will be many different opinions about this movie. Sadly, I don't think it is a clear winner. And by that I mean I don't think everybody's going to fall in love with it. This will definitely have people who really really like it, people who it was a fun movie to watch, I don't necessarily need to watch it on repeat, and then of course there will be those who do not like it. I definitely fall somewhere in between that this was a really great movie and it hit super well and yeah it was fun. Somewhere in the middle of there, there are definitely aspects of it that I absolutely love. For starters, I love Thor, and I love the way they represent him now in the MCU with this kind of satiristic, funny jokes. I like that. I know a lot of people didn't like the switch from Thor the Dark World to Thor Ragnarok, where he's kind of serious and doesn't really make jokes to this kind of comedic character that a lot of people didn't like that change. I thought Taika Waititi did a fantastic job bringing this character to life in Thor Ragnarok, and if you enjoyed Thor Ragnarok, you're going to love Thor Love and Thunder. It really is just that simple. The jokes, the idea, the colors, the cinematography, it's all very similar. They definitely leaned on what they did right with Thor Ragnarok and brought it over to Thor Love and Thunder. Now, Taika Waititi and the crew, the cast, the family, they all think that they went even further with this film. And I think in a lot of ways they did, in a lot of ways they didn't. The jokes and the idea of the comedic timing is all very similar, not necessarily bigger. But I will say, in my opinion, none of the jokes feel forced. They are all very natural. They're simple, they're obvious, and they're clear, almost dad joke-like ideas, but that was what they were going for. And nothing feels like, wow, they're really trying to be funny here. It just is, hey, here's a good joke, here's a chuckle, let's move on. The thing I think needs to be highlighted is there is, unlike in Ragnarok perhaps, a very heavy dark side. There is this force, which is Gore the God Butcher, Christian Bale's character, that is running around the backside of this film, causing this heavy cloud of emotional destruction, and it is portrayed extremely well. They don't have a problem jumping from the jokes to the seriousness, and when there are serious moments, there are serious moments. And that's a huge plus as well for me, Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. I know a lot of people aren't confidently sure that they like the way he looks, that the character's not portrayed the way he is in the comics. I think he looks great. I think adding any more or CGI effects, it would really just cause some distraction and take away from the emotion of the character. I'm very happy with their decision to change the look to this, this character, to make him look like this, and, and I'm completely fine with that. Overall, the character is compelling, he makes you think, he makes you question the way things are, and he is going to make you want to see more of him, so hopefully you enjoy that don't focus too much on what he looks like. I don't think he looks bad at all, and that's my opinion. You guys all have yours. You can let me know later on if that really just ruined the character for you, but the acting of the character, the story, the way that they jump right into who he is and what he wants and what he's doing and how he's doing it, it's all very well explained. So that as well is something that I think needs to be appreciated and something you guys could be excited about moving forward. Again, the team, the people Thor's hanging out with, Guardians of the Galaxy, I wish they were in the movie a little bit more, 
We all knew they weren't going to be, but this definitely built a lot of excitement for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which very well might have been the idea. Hey, the Guardians of the Galaxy is where Thor left off. Let's throw them in there. Let's get some funny laughs with them because the Thor and Star-Lord whole idea of those two together is just great and then you see that the guardians of the galaxy they're there they're doing some stuff but it just leaves you wanting more guardians of the galaxy 3 coming around the corner and it is going to be a big one i think it's going to be an emotional one we're going to lose some characters and i'm excited to see what that leaves us with and this movie really helped get me excited for that although of course i would have loved to see more of them then on top of that, you have Thor moving from Guardians of the Galaxy to the Revengers, I guess was the old name of them in the Thor Ragnarok movie. They don't really refer to themselves as that, but that's who the group is. It's going to be Korg, sometimes Meek, Valkyrie's there, and then of course the lovely Natalie Portman, who will be playing Mighty Thor. Her storyline, again, compelling. It's funny. The jokes that she makes, although I would say very corny, they fit. It makes sense why they are corny and why they are kind of awkward. If you take them out of context, it seems like it's just really bad acting. But it's not. It's a hilarious idea of a character trying to find out who she is now that she's, she's changed and now that she's this new thing. Because Natalie Portman's character, Jane Foster, is this nerdy scientist chick. And now she's a superhero. And you're seeing that transition, and I think they nail it. I think a lot of people will take some of the jokes out of context and be like, wow, this is so bad. But if you really look at it for what it is, it's describing a character who's going through a rapid change that she doesn't necessarily understand and she's trying to fit in. And it is really, really well delivered. So huge markups for that as well. The introduction of new characters in this movie, absolutely fun. You're going to love who comes up, who shows in, and you're going to have a blast with that as well. And then the post credit scenes are relevant. They are a lot of fun and they mean something. It's not like we've seen with Hawkeye or with Doctor Strange, where you're sitting in the theater through the entire credits for kind of nothing. It's like some big funny joke, oh ho ha, we got you. And, and no, that nobody really enjoys that. These ones are definitely worth staying through. They're very, very cool. And I, I just love the idea of the second one. And then the first one is just exciting. I do have something, you know, a qualm, a question mark that really, I don't know if I love, and I'm going to go watch this movie again, so I'll get a second feel of it now that I know what's coming, I can kind of look forward to it. The ending is the only part that as a fan I'm struggling with, and it's not necessarily poor writing, it's not necessarily, you know, a bad ending, I just don't know if I personally loved it. I don't know if I would have done it that way. Now I understand why they did it the way they did, and, and all of that, but I just... I would have hoped for something different. I would have hoped for a different outcome. And when you watch the movie, you can let me know what you think as well about the ending. It's cool. It's interesting. It's not necessarily different, but it's different from what I expected, if that makes sense. This isn't like a new idea or anything that is really that crazy, but it is just like not what I was hoping for this section of the franchise. And uh, we'll have to see how it pans out. There's definitely potential there. And I'm curious, I'm curious some of the details that I guess aren't answered. And that'll be fun discussion after you do see it and we're having our, our spoiler chat. So just keep that in mind. I don't know if I loved the ending. The jokes, the characters, the colors, the cinematography, the fight scenes, the action sequences, the villain. It's all top-notch Marvel. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. Because I know that I did. I will enjoy it again the second time. And I can't wait to chat with you guys about it. See what you thought about the new characters that they've introduced. The first times we're going to be meeting some of these new characters. You already know about a couple of them, like Zeus. And then you don't know about a couple of them. And you can't even guess a couple of them. Because it's just that surprising of these characters that they introduced. I know a few people will be disappointed. And that's okay. This movie doesn't have to be for everybody. I personally think this style of movie for Marvel is an absolute win. It fits the James Gunn program. It fits, you know, everything Taika Waititi has done so far. Some of the Avengers jokes and some of that comedy that's in there. This is really kind of like the highlight of what they do. And, and if that's what you love, you're going to have a great time with this movie. But let me know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of this review? I try to be honest with it. I try to share my honest thoughts. Thor Love and Thunder is a fun movie. And if you go in and you have a lot of fun with it, you're going to have a good time. If you go in and you want to be critical about it, you're going to find a lot wrong with it. So uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you to everybody who watched till the very end of the video. If you found it helpful, useful, or entertaining, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell. And I'll be sure to catch all of you guys in the next one right here on Cosmic Culture.